In this video I'll be doing a review of Ultimate Edition version 3.8. Now in a way Ultimate Edition must be more appealing towards gamers. It's a very colourful themed distro with um, perhaps almost a garish look to it. Uh, depends how you feel about it really. I think it can be nice but it is just a little bit over the top. Now, there's one catastrophic problem with this distro. It's based on Ubuntu 13.04. Now if you remember, Ubuntu 13.04 was the first of the short support time interim releases of Ubuntu, so it's only got 9 months of support. Well that was released in April, and now we're coming up to the end of 2013, so actually it's only got about 1 month support left. So this distro has 5 weeks of support left until it's end of life. Great. That's one major issue of it. Now I can't really go recommending that you use a distro that is going to be end of life in such a short time. You're probably better off going with one of the previous versions that was based on Ubuntu 12.10 because that's actually supported for 18 months. Yeah, yeah, I know it sounds all weird, but that's the way it is. The desktop we have here is called Mate, and this is more of a spin-off of the GNOME Classic. The layout of it, as you see, we've got the applications, places, and systems at the top there, and we've got shortcuts to LibreOffice. They're offering a cloud-based storage called Copy Agent, GIMP, XBMC, Terminator, multiple terminals, and Firefox. On the top right hand side we have processor, network, and disk space in little graph forms. A newsreader, radio station, network, volume control, time, date, and calendar, logout, and shutdown buttons. The big thing about this distro is the variety of themes and the integration they've done with Compiz and the Emerald Theme Manager, so it all makes it look very colourful. So as I showed during the introduction, there's quite a lot of themes available. And there's also a bit of a choice for the backgrounds, but these just seem to be the legacy Ultimate Edition desktops. But it does look quite nicely done. They've done a very nice job on the theming. There's not really anything with the games. All we have is just a shortcut to play on Linux. I'm surprised. They could have put the Steam clients on here. And it is 2.5 gig to download this ISO, so it's a fair size. With Firefox, we have a few tabs pre-configured to load the Ultimate Edition website. It's got a few add-ons pre-installed, so what we've got over here? My Permissions Cleaner. Okay. Scanning Apps Permissions. Different. The one thing this distro has going for it is it doesn't have the privacy issues that come with the Unity Online Searcher. I think that is something they're quite proud of. But as I've mentioned before, it's not really a huge issue. Um, no, where's that shortcut gone? I don't really know what I'm using here. What have I just installed? My permissions cleaner. Protect your personal information. Okay, we need to enable it though to make it do something. Google no tracking. Simply remove tracking code redirect from Google search results. Okay. Why have they put download helper? That leaks your private information all over the place, doesn't it? And click and clean. Okay, so some nice add-ons for Firefox to protect your privacy. Except that one which I'll just go and remove. And also you'll find now that Firefox starts a bit faster without that. Okay, 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 right. Permissions, scan with permissions. I'm not going to proceed any further. I really don't know what I'm doing with that add-on. Flash Player is pre-installed on here. So if I look at my channel and... Huh, okay, quids up Ubuntu 13.10. Let's look at that one. Faster than it should be, indeed. Faster than this, this distro is. And we say there that um, the video would play if I hadn't got adverts enabled. I just noticed the background of Firefox is one that I have on my system. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Some of these applications are at the latest version. So for GIMP, that really surprised me what that was. The goat invasion. GIMP 2.9. I've never even used it yet. Let's take a look at what applications we get pre-installed. So under accessories, uh, nothing that notable really. Other than they've got QEMU Launcher, seems a bit of a strange one to include. Uh, games, there's only play on Linux. Graphics, as mentioned, we've got GIMP, okay, a viewer for Sony eBook format files, and we've got this Fatch Batch Converter and Image Inspector. So not too much included. Internet, we have Firefox the web browser. In fact, it also has Chromium as well, but I can't see a shortcut to it there. Transmission for the torrent client, and all we got for the emails is a check Gmail notifier. 
under Office, we've got the full suite of LibreOffice. Other, that's shortcuts to Wine. Programming, there's a few things. Sound and video, there seems to be quite a lot there, but they've uh, not got any more than two of each type of application. They've got two audio players there, Clementine and Amarok. VLC and Totem for the video players. And then just a few different sort of video utilities. System tools, a variety of things there. System monitor. You can see the memory usage is fairly high. Places and uh, system, so preferences and administration has a variety of things on there. So here's what I thought of Ultimate Edition version 3.8. So it comes with lots of colourful themes and they've done quite a lot of additional configuration on some of the applications. So it's one of these distros you could pick up and use straight out the box. You don't really need to do anything with it. But on the downside, there's that major issue there. A very short support time until the base operating system of Ubuntu 13.04 is end of life. From the time of this review, that's about five weeks away. And the responsiveness seems a bit slow. Well, considering it's based on Mate, which is like um, a spin-off of the old GNOME 2.3, so you'd think it'd be a bit faster than what it is. And of the comments I've written down there, base memory usage seems a little bit high actually, 440 meg, and the application selection seems reasonable, but I'm confused as to what target audience is. It used to be a gaming distro, but there's no games on there. It seems more of a business distro. It's got LibreOffice, a full suite of LibreOffice. No, it's not that either. It's, is it just a regular home users distro? Hmm, I don't know, really. It seems to fall into uh, covering quite a few areas, except gaming. And it's got a mixed selection of repositories with uh, different offerings of daily and stable repositories for the same sort of application, but they're not all enabled. You can pick and choose which one you want. I did find one bug there, but <laughs> couldn't even replicate it. It was just one weird startup. I was like, what the hell? And I eight copies of the Kaja. I don't need that. So overall, unfortunately, I've scored this distro very low at 50%. If it wasn't for the short support time, it probably would be more around 75. Now, thanks for watching. See you all later.